we're going to do a podcast and we're both going to have matching gym suits. Oh, boy. Richard Simmons. Oh, gear. boy. Oh, Lord. Richard Simmons. Okay. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Hello, everyone. Hello, Rachel. Good to see you. Good to have you here. Thanks, Welcome to another edition, another episode, I should say, of World Class Mindset. As many of you who watch this program know, I do my best to bring people into this podcast who I feel are simply a cut above. They're dreamers, people who've developed a world class mindset. They refuse to give up. And today, we have somebody who is just that. Her name is Rachel Cruz, otherwise known as Ray. Ray, <laughs> good to have you here today Thank you so much. in the podcast. You're so welcome. So about 10 years ago, um, Rachel came across our paths down in our Eaton Town office, went to work for our company, stayed here for about a year. She had dreams, like all of us do. And because of our company, sometimes people stay for a little while and then pursue their ultimate dream. Some people stay longer and pursue their dream and then another and then there's people like me who stay here forever mm -hmm. and so this has been my dream career but for you Rachel you came for about a year and then you pursued your life and your career as a singer as a performer so I'm out in Seabright at an incredible place called Ocean House that my daughter and I were there at night and there was this great band there and we were listening and I'm listening and I'm watching and I was mesmerized. She was so entertaining, her and her entire band. And by the way, the name of her band, she'll tell you a little bit more about them, is uh, Stereo Social Club. Mm -hmm. Killing it. I'm telling you, killing it. And I'm not saying it because Rachel is here. She was killing it. So much so that when a break came, I couldn't help myself. I got up, I went over to the band and I went to say, you guys are amazing. I looked at Ray, and, and she looked at me, and she said, Eric Giglione. <laughs> what the heck? And then she told me that she worked oh, no. with us and for mm -hmm. us about a decade ago, 10 years ago. She never forgot it. And that deep down, she always wanted to be a singer, mm -hmm. a rock star. And so here she was living her dream. First, I want to go back 10 years ago, if mm -hmm. I can when you were with us and you weren't yet singing your ultimate dream. At that time, what were some of the lessons that you took away from here? Well, first off, I wanna say thank you so much for having me and thank you for so much of the praise. I'm very humbled to be here. Definitely one of the takeaways I would say is being able to work in an environment and an atmosphere that was so rich in energy. Like I remember Monday mornings, the music, the dancing, that was the introduction to the week. That was the coming back together. It's like we're starting, you know, we're starting over again on this high energy. So that I definitely took away. And then also just um, being around people that weren't just focused on making money and having a career, but a step further. It's like, you know, who am I becoming? I think what you're doing for a living is very important. Everybody focused on what they're doing for a living. But then how do you incorporate who you're becoming for a living? Wow. You know, when you're working with people who are investing in you and your character and your mindset, you know, in the development of you as a person and speaking to you in such a rich way, it reminded me of church. And I grew up in the church. <laughs> people you know, so, tell me that since I feel like they're going so, to church on Monday. Yeah, I was like, this energy and this empowerment was very attractive to me and it was very... Um, familiar to me, you know, cool, growing, cool. growing up in the church. Cool. I love that because you grew up in the church. Yeah. So let's go maybe back further if you want, um, because I don't think anything just happens. You had these dreams Absolutely. of being a singer. Tell us a little bit about that. Where did these dreams mm -hmm. start? How did it all happen? Well, I grew up singing in the church. Um, I have two brothers, a sister, and we come from a musical family. I was able to develop myself in the church, which is nice because you develop as, at a young age. Um, you're developing your talent. And you take for granted at times as an adult the amount of time you spend as a kid um, in a state of flow, just lost. Yeah. I wasn't like, you know, as an adult, you're like, I want to learn piano. I got to spend two hours a day, you know, doing this thing. Practicing it. As a kid, you get lost and you're there for hours and hours and hours. And I think I didn't realize that till I got older and I was like, wow, I, you know, wow. I've spent a lot of time wow. vocalizing and you, know, you don't realize. You, you, you take me back to my childhood because mm -hmm. when I was a kid, hours and hours and hours, I played yeah. the drums. Mm -hmm. So then now here you go, 
you're, you're singing in church. You wanted to pursue, I guess, a career in singing, but you hadn't done it yet. Right. So you came to, went to work, like we all mm -hmm. do, right. make a paycheck. What right. was the transition between working with us and maybe other jobs in between mm -hmm. to where now you're full-time, by the way, uh, tell our audience a little bit about where you're playing these yeah. days, like some of the gigs you're doing. Right now, we're traveling a little bit up and down the East Coast. We're going to be in Boston in two weeks. We were just in Philly a couple of weeks ago. This week, we're going to be in Atlantic City at the Hard Rock uh, Thursday night, which is tomorrow. Friday, well, I think by the time this airs, <laughs> you'll have missed a show. But uh, Friday, we're going to be at Oceans in Atlantic in Atlantic City, and then uh, this weekend we're also going to be at Martell's. You're asking about the transition between, you know, what I was doing for a living and different jobs, like the leap into singing. Um, to be honest, and I wasn't going to talk about this, a little over five years ago, I um, reached a very low point where I got very depressed. And I was not happy in my job. I was working in an office setting at that time. I was not happy in my relationship, and I just didn't feel happy in life. And I wound up in the hospital. When I came out, I had to go through some counseling and get myself to a point where I felt stable and functional, have the support, you know, whether it was medical or counseling, Amen. have the support that I needed. And I just reached a point where it's like, I need help, you know, I'm not happy, I'm not well. Mm -hmm. From that point, I started going to auditions. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to hold myself back wow. anymore. And I, I, again, I wasn't going to talk about this because it's very vulnerable. But at the same time, I think that it teaches people like when you are in a vulnerable point, sometimes you need that in order to take you to the next level mm -hmm. and to kind of give you the courage that mm -hmm. you need to say, you know what, I need to do what I love. I need to do what, what burns inside of me and what I have a passion for. Wow. And forget about who's going to say what who's supporting me, who's not supporting me. So I said, I'm going to audition. I said, I'm just going to audition for, for everything and anything. And the first audition that I did, I was picked. Three tribute shows. One of them was Donna Summer, one of them was Gloria Estefan, and one of them was Selena Quintanilla. And I wound up singing in different states, singing in front of thousands of people. And it wow. taught me, you reach low points in life for a reason. It's not for you to lose hope. Sometimes it's for something to kind of, for a shift to happen, mm -hmm. for a courage to, to come about, and for you to step you know, into a new beginning. What role does your faith have, or did it have, and does it have? Well, first off, I'll say that I have had to learn to see and understand God in my own way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some of the ideas that, that I was raised with, they didn't serve me. And I saw how they didn't serve other people. And I think it's the reason why there are many people that have like a resentment. I had to learn to separate church uh, and people from God. I saw a comedian saying the other day, everybody tell me, go to church, go to church. And he <laughs> says, but then they say, you are the temple. I am the temple. I'm walking around with God all day long. You know, and so he was being funny. I think it was Eddie Griffin. But at the same time, there's a reality to that. Yeah, I am, that. you know, I am the essence of God. I am, I am the presence of God walking on earth. And so there's a part of me that needed to begin to understand that God is in me, how I am, how I speak, the passions that I have, the dreams I have, the goals I have, what lights me on fire. It's all designed perfectly. God is in all that. In order for me to have a strong faith, which I think I do today, I'm not in a religion. I don't. Yep, re re pertain to a particular group, but I have a strong faith. But I, I think that in order for that to happen, I needed to understand that I am perfectly made in my imperfection. You know, I am whole in Love my, in, you know, Love even it. with my gaps and missing or lacking yep. whatever I'm lacking or whatever I need to learn or whatever area I need to grow in, I am complete, I'm sustained, and I am favored. So a lot of us who are watching this episode right now um, hear your story and maybe we're still wandering around not sure what to do any advice you would give to people who are maybe in that space that you were in where they're not pursuing their dreams mm -hmm. and their goals when I was with this company I saw something that I really really liked and that was attractive to me and it was people that were passionate when you speak from your heart 
and you know what you're saying. You carry it with such confidence and conviction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So passion is very important. I believe that you have the privacy of your thoughts for a reason. That intimate space is where your goals and dreams lie. And that is where God or the universe or whatever you believe in uh, is in that invisibleness. Go into the silence. Really mm. discover what wow. is that? Like what, what, how are you wired? And I'll say this also, one of the things that I know about myself and that's in my seed is I like to speak. One of my friends <laughs> says to me, Ray, you got a lot of content. And I'm like, what are you telling me? That I talk a lot? Is that what, I got a lot of content. <laughs> and so is I love the, to speak. And I used to drive around, you don't know this, I was telling Nick about this. I used to drive around when I was doing appointments and I would deliver speeches in my car. I, record, I would record it in my phone. <laughs> One of the topics, I, I would talk about mindset. And so, and I would go on and on and record all these messages that were, nobody was there. But you know what? I believe that, and, and I would say this to anybody who has a goal or a dream or a passion, listen to it, recognize it. Because in my mm -hmm. secret car drives where no one was, and I was doing all these messages, that there was something happening that brought us something back together today. Birth. One thing I would say is, okay, you know, whenever you feel inspired by a message you hear, if you have a dream or a goal, you don't go now and announce it to everyone and say, I'm going to be X, Y, and Z. I think you have to keep it hidden. I think you have to nourish it from the inside mm -hmm. out. It needs, there's an incubation mm -hmm. period. It needs to be in there, but don't take that time for granted because one day when it's ready, it comes out into the world. And what does a baby do? It brings everybody joy. It brings everybody joy. So what I would say is do not abandon your passions. Do not abandon your dreams. They're in, in the privacy and the intimacy that you have within yourself where you could dream. That space is there for a reason and it's for you to nurture that from the inside out. You know, wow. it's not meant to die. Protect your dreams, safeguard your mind, safeguard your goals and, and what you're dreaming about, what wow. you're envisioning. Wow. Um, and I will also say that I do believe there's an outside force. You know, you're not alone. I heard a speaker say, God works with you, not for you. Right. I'm supposed to do my part. Success is calculated, right? right? So when I step on stage, I'm doing vocal warm ups. I know my lyrics. I know what my energy is like. I'm ready to rock the stage. I have eye contact. I'm singing into your eyes. I'm dancing with the people. I'm mirroring and matching, right? <laughs> if it's, good or what? <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> However, I also know that there is this intelligence outside of my humanness, yeah. and I am learning to trust that. Let's let's touch that a little because I love what is you talked about I'm sorry. about going. <laughs> What, what was that? What you say? I go on. You got to stop me. Sometimes. No, you, I don't. I don't want to stop you. The okay. exact opposite. Because okay. I want all of it to come out. What role do mentors play in your life right now, and how do you leverage mm -hmm. mentors? What do they do for you? Um, well, first off, I'll say I think mentors are very important. You know, mm -hmm. going back to that whole pregnancy and and kind of um, nurturing a dream from the inside out. A pregnant mama knows that she's got to eat certain things and certain things she can't eat because the baby can't eat that. So when you have a big dream brewing inside of you, there are certain things you cannot listen to. There are certain things you're going to have to block mm. out. And there are certain things you have to eat because it's going to nourish your baby. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are certain shows I don't watch on TV. There are certain things I don't eat. There are certain ideas that I will not embrace. There are certain things that I, when I hear them, I print them out. I put them on my wall. You know, when I hear Jim Ron say safeguard and, and, and how is it? Uh, he says um, my face, to Jim keep, Rohn. yeah, to keep um, guard at the door of your mind. So I surround myself with that. It's very important. Um, the yeah. quotes that you have around you, the I don't ideas. Think, I don't think a lot of people realize, right? Oh, that's key. How key that is, right? Talk about support. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you went through that very traumatic period in your life, um, you probably felt very, very alone. How important was support? Did you have any support mm -hmm. during that period of time? And if so, how important was it? And if you didn't have it, how did you get through it? I think in my case, particularly dealing with mental illness and, and depression, I needed to turn to people in the medical field and be open but aside from that, I needed to learn how to support myself, 
How am I going to develop a lifestyle that's going to support myself, a mindset that's going to support my stability and my growth? Mm -hmm. And also, who am I going to surround myself with? Now, unfortunately, I learned um, how to support myself because I didn't have the support of my family. Even like at a young of us. age. I didn't either, right? Yeah, my wanted, story is like Elvis. That's what I want like, because a lot of us out there, yeah. we don't have that support at home. Yeah, right? and, and, and it's a ugly, beautiful thing. So I didn't have the support of my family. So in a in a on a positive note, it made me develop myself. What am I thinking when I wake up in the morning? What are what is my morning routine like? Ooh. What are the truths that I am accepting and that I am programming myself? Because we we you know, embrace the idea of mindset. Well, what does mindset tell us? And this is the message I used to give in my car. <laughs> <laughs> mindset, the term mindset automatically implies that your mind can be set like an alarm clock. You know, it can be programmed. Wow. And so you have to first embrace that before you set the mind. You have to understand that it can be set and that it's being set. You got to step back and say, wait a minute. Is it being set the right way? Am I getting exactly. the, the so right Exactly. So now the consciousness comes in. Well, how is it being set? What do I believe? Sure. What am I saying every morning when I wake up, when I go to sleep? Your self-talk, right? Exactly. Self-talk. And so I kind of was forced to do that because I didn't have the right. support. Now, the good thing about that is that, well, I will say um, my husband at the time was my greatest support. My husband at the time, and he's been my rock through Beautiful. a lot of life's difficult yeah. challenges. We actually worked in the company together. Oh my God. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but I think something that we, we both um, align in our mindset is that we both understand that you have to be in here. You mm -hmm. gotta go in here. You have to develop yourself from the inside out. You have to work on the self-talk. You have to listen to speakers. Love and it. I'm not promoting separatism, but um, what I have experienced is that it's better to be alone than in bad company, like they say, right? And I never spend mm. time by myself. I spend time with myself. If you learn how to do that, wow. that changes the ball game. That changes the whole game. I talk with myself yeah, a lot. Right, right. All this talk that I'm doing here, I do it with myself. I'm like, come on, girl, let's go. We're not doing this wow. today. Come on. You got a lot of, you got big dreams in you. Right. you got, this is huge. You got to learn to do that in your own personal space. Yes. It's very this, intimate, this but it's very, very powerful. So. Very huge that we talk to ourselves, mm -hmm. that we encourage ourselves. Psychiatrists say the healthiest people talk to themselves. We got it all wrong. Think, but yet socially, if you talk to yourself, and who doesn't say, where did I put that thing? Where is that? You know, you, you naturally talk to yourself. You know, it, it's, it's natural it's really, and it's, really, it's necessary. Really wise, yeah. wise stuff here you're sharing, Ray. Really cool stuff. A lot of times when we don't have the mindset that we need to have that's going to serve us, and when we, we start noticing that we have a negative mindset, if you really take note, that came from somewhere. And a lot of times it comes from the outside that's voices. Nice. Being that it's coming from outside voices, you really got to start closing off. Tune out those outside yeah. voices. You got to close off. And I think that that barrier is not permanent. You know, it's, it goes back to what I was saying about the, the mother and the baby. And that baby's in there for a period of time. You know, I think you got to give yourself an incubation period. And I call it cocooning. You got to cocoon. You know, you want to be a butterfly one day, you got to cocoon. You have to go into your personal space, intimate space. And what does that mean on a, on a concrete level? Less going out with the wrong people, going out, drinking, eating. I, I understand that, and I still do it now. If it wasn't for this podcast, I wouldn't be out going out looking for where can I speak? Where can I go? No, I, I'm doing all this mindset thing on my own. And this is like divinely orchestrated. Well, here I am. You and I came together. We, you know, we came back sharing, together and sharing you with the world. Yeah, just... and, and I'm thankful for that. I'm humbled because no one was in my car. No one, you know. I've always wanted to be a speaker. I've always wanted to inspire people. I think that. So we tell all... me, tell me about that because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'd be your biggest fan. I, I, you make podcasts or you make stuff. I'm gonna become your biggest <laughs> fan because you're amazing. Talk about that just a little bit as we wrap up, because I know you have dreams. You're living yeah. your dreams right now. You're a rock star in every sense of the word. Is that something that you mm -hmm. feel and see yourself going to? I mean, are we going to get to see you in Madison Square Garden? I mean, are you dreaming about these things or are there other dreams in there? 
just let's wrap up with what are you dreaming about? You know, right. one of the things I'm learning is there's a difference between dreams and plans. We make all these plans and there's one thing to plan something and say, well, I'm going to do, you know, I'm very calculative. I mean, I've done bodybuilding shows. And when you do bodybuilding shows, you have to wake up, sleep certain hours, have a certain amount of water intake, have certain supplements, eat certain meals. It's very calculated success. And I like that. The ego loves that. I did this. I did all this and look at the outcome and I knew it was going to happen just like that because I did it. And I think what I'm learning is that the difference between planning and dreaming is that dreaming requires a trust. It requires you to have this expansive imagination and then deposit those dreams into this vast universe and say, it's almost like a wishing well. Who does that? Any, who's, has anybody thrown a coin in a wishing well? So it seems very unrealistic, but you've got to dream. And I say, you know, dream big, but understand that there is a greater intelligence moving all the pieces. Wow. Mr. Rappaport, by the way, founder of our company, said dream big, but implement realistically. Yes, and, and that's dreaming and planning. Yes. You've got to plan. You've got to have formulas. You've got to have regimens. You've got to have routines. By the way, you know, we didn't even touch on the fact that you're a personal trainer on top of it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we got to do a fitness session next time. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm going to be in pain. Help me out. I can feel it. She's going to get me and beat me up. <laughs> we're going to do a podcast, and we're both going to have matching gym suits. Oh, boy. Richard Simmons. Oh, gear. boy. Oh, Lord. Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you personally train, though, don't you? Yes. You yeah. do that also. Yeah. Did this come out of your d desire for fitness for yourself and said, let me help others, or was it? Absolutely. So, and one thing I'll say is never feel bad about who you are. And, and the, kind of when you start noticing, like, this is who I am, I tend to push a little harder, I tend to speak a little louder, I tend to be who you this are who because you are. that's guiding you that's that's there for a reason you're here you're the seed you know you're opening mm -hmm, up with mm -hmm. all that you're equipped with and you got to allow that to sprout so i will say that but it's funny going back to fitness i um have two brothers and my dad uh when i was maybe in middle school my dad got a whole gym set from a friend of his in the church it was a, he was a cop so my dad didn't touch it my brothers didn't touch it, and I would go downstairs. I'm talking about I was in middle school, and I'd go downstairs, and I'd do bicep curls because that's all I knew how to do. <laughs> so I do, and I'd look in the mirror, and I'm, and I'm telling you that alone time where you spend doing something you enjoy or you love or you have a passion about or developing a passion for something, it's not in vain. So I used to do that, and then I, you know, I... So that was the beginning of your whole fitness thing. Right, and then I got into running track, and then I got into wrestling, and I did boxing. Wrestled and Then I became a personal trainer, yeah. I don't yeah. know that I'd want to box with her. Yeah. I mean, I might get knocked out. <laughs> so you, are you still doing that? Are you doing personal training still? Yes, I am. I'm doing it independently in Wachung. I have a friend who has an independent gym, so I just work out of his gym. I bring my clients there, and it's a nice Beautiful. setup, you know. Beautiful. I'm not here for just the physical. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not here for just... A, a physical transformation same like in, in AIL I don't think everyone's here just making Mind, money body spirit it's a lot of it's a lot more to it you know um, making money is part of it but sure. you know you're making money because of who you're becoming like I'm, I'm working with a client now and he was coming from 280 pounds he's down to 250 and he's, he was stuck for a couple of weeks and he just crossed over wow into the 40s and I'm like and he feels great. Mm. And he said, I feel so good. I hope this motivation continues. And I said, it will continue. But I said, do you know why you feel great? I said, because when you cross a barrier that was a limit in your mind and you start feeling like, ah, I can't do this. Is it possible? Maybe I should settle. You know, maybe this much money a year is good. I, I don't know if I could surpass, reach my goal. You start getting into that mindset, you know, once you surpass and, and so you actually do something achieve, surpass, now your confidence comes, you're saying? Your confidence comes back. I feel believing. like, yeah, I feel like you start, now the belief takes over and everything in your body knows it. So you wake up with more energy. You move with a little more pep in your step. Wow. So that's what he's going through. And I think that's the cool part about, you know, like personal training isn't just physical. It's a lot more yeah. to do with the mindset that you're helping someone create while they're achieving a goal that they, feel they thought they couldn't achieve. 
So there's a lot of power behind that, you know. Ray, so I, I, can, I enjoy I, that. I, do, I don't know if you know what you see in the future, but somehow, some way, I see you a uh, rock star like Pat Benatar or some of those amazing artists. Mm -hmm. I see you as a rock star trainer. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have many, you have several paths right now. Mm -hmm. Is your passionate path singing? Is that where you want to be? Is that where we're all going to see you down the road? You know, I wish that I could uh, tell you where you'll see me because. <laughs> Because um, I, I'm a planner and I like to predict what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 but what I'm learning is that, um, and Wayne Dyer speaks on this. I, I listen to a lot mm -hmm. of Les Brown, Eric Thomas, Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay. Love um, all these people. Absolutely. Wayne Dyer used to talk about, you know, planning. And like you can, make, you can have your plan, but you have to understand that there's an outside intelligence or I feel like it's not outside there, but there is an intelligence that as a human is being, we us. feel like it's outside. We're like, well, I didn't do that. And it's, it's weaved into everything, into everything wow. you are and into everything you're doing. Wow. So I feel like something higher is guiding the pieces. And I, and I've come to a point where what, that's what I would tell people surrender, Wow. whatever that looks like, whatever that feels like, I love that word, surrender, surrender to that thing that, that, you know, that, that goes I by no it. name. I love it. You know? I love it. On that note, we are both of us going to surrender this podcast <laughs> to those viewers out there. I know everyone watching yeah. is going to be absolutely excited, inspired mm -hmm. to do what you have I done and so. so many others have done because they have the power just like you did. And I thank you so much for coming to share all of this with mm -hmm. us here today. And Thank Super you. excited. Great having Thank you here. You, Coach. All the best awesome. to you. God bless you. Whether we see you as a nationwide <laughs> trainer or a singer, we're going to be connected, you and me, forever awesome. and ever. You're awesome. You got it. Thanks for all of you joining us Thank here today. Thank you.